Hello, my name is Dr. Kara Sillen, and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we covered intellectual disability disorder. In this video, we're going to cover language disorder, which is the first of the communication disorders. So let's get started. Remember, we are still in the category of neurodevelopmental disorders, and communication disorders is a grouping of the neurodevelopmental disorders. The communication disorders that we're going to talk about in this video and future videos are language disorder, speech sound disorder, child onset fluency disorder, also known as stuttering, social pragmatic communication disorder, and specified as well as unspecified communication disorder. Before we talk about any of these communication disorders, we need to define some terms. The first term is language. Now I want you to think of language as a set of symbols that can represent an alphabet, sounds, as well as words. Language can also be considered sign language where hand gestures are used to express letters, words, meanings, emotions, and symbols. And then lastly, language can be expressed through pictures. Think of the old cave drawings. These pictures form some of the first language of human beings. The second term we're gonna look at is communication. Communication is defined as a means to express ideas, emotions, and or attitudes. Communication can be expressed through verbal means as well as nonverbal means. It can also be used to shift a person's thinking, influence others, and their behaviors, as well as to help to develop one's own ideas about something. The third term we're gonna define is speech. Speech is how someone articulates an idea or belief. It is how a person pronounces words, has fluency, which means the flow of something, and resonance, which means how deeply or fully a person expresses something. When working with or assessing a child or an adult for language, it's very important to have a comprehensive understanding of that language. Not only is it imperative to know how to pronounce words, but understanding how they fit into a sentence as well as their cultural implications need to be understood. Before assessing someone, it's important to know what their first language is and if they're being raised bilingual. Now we're gonna to turn to our very first communication disorder, which is language disorder. If a professional is going to diagnose someone with a language disorder, they have to fit these four criteria. Number one, the individual will struggle with hearing and understanding language, using gestures and possibly writing in that language there will probably be a limited vocabulary. The individual might have problems with placing words in their correct sentence structure. They also might have trouble putting their own ideas into words during their attempts to converse with someone else. Number two, when comparing the language skills of the individual to their peers, they're gonna be much lower than their peers. This will definitely limit peer-to-peer -peer communication as well as cause limitations on the type of work that the child can eventually do. Social skills will be limited as well as academic potential. Number three, the limitations given language and its usage show up in early childhood. And then number four, the problems given language are not present because of neurological issues, physical or hearing impairment, physical problems with movement, or any other type of health condition. When language disorder is presented at a professional level, most cases present with children having trouble acquiring and comprehending vocabulary. They usually have problems with sentence structure that is limited and behind their peers. These disparities can show through the child's speaking, through their writing, or through their use of sign language. Professionals will distinguish between expressive versus receptive ability given language. Expressive ability means a person being able to produce gestures or to vocalize what they need, whereas receptive ability means recognizing and comprehending the messages that are given to a person in the form of language. Language disorder is compounding because it impacts the ability to grasp basic language and grammar. This means a child will often struggle with their first words and will continue to be behind. If they're able to put sentences together, they'll be shorter and present problems given past, present, and future tenses. It'll be especially problematic to understand if words have a double meaning or if there's slang involved. Synonyms will be difficult and reading instructions will pose increasing difficulty. 
Acquiring new words will be difficult, especially as they get longer and more complex. These children often show difficulty telling a story and learning to use new words. When a professional goes about diagnosing language disorder, they'll look at the individual's history. They'll look at standardized test scores that are available. And they'll want to observe the individual directly within their own clinical setting. A child with language disorder may appear shy and only want to talk to their close family members or their close friends. By the time a child reaches the age of four years old, professionals are much better able to predict and measure where the child is at. Until the child is four, there may be lots of individual differences that are seen with those with language disorder. There may be different levels of conversational skills versus the use of words versus different sounds of language that are made. For those children that repeat words over and over again, these cases seem to be more severe and difficult to work with. Treatment doesn't always seem as effective and reading comprehension is often difficult. These issues tend to be seen in families over many generations. Before an individual can be diagnosed with language disorder, there are many situations that have to be ruled out. If a person has a different culture and are raised by individuals learning a second language, this needs to be ruled out. Sensory impairments need to be ruled out as well. Professionals need to assess for an intellectual disability before a child is diagnosed with language disorder. Neurological disorders can pose a problem for children trying to learn a language as well. And then autism spectrum disorder can be, if a child has autism spectrum disorder, this can be really difficult to assess a child's language acquisition. The child may actually know and comprehend language and not be able to show this or reflect this in a clinical setting. It's very normal for a child that has been diagnosed with language disorder to be diagnosed with other conditions as well. And this is known as having comorbidities. The other conditions that are often diagnosed with language disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorder, social pragmatic disorder, specific learning disorder, and developmental coordination disorder. All right, well, that is the end of our video concerning language disorder, which of course is part of the communication disorders, which are part of neurodevelopmental disorders. I'm gonna be going over the next communication disorders in the next couple of videos. If you like this video, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much and have an amazing day.